Hi, I'm U.S. Senator Chris Coons from Delaware. Uh, I'm in my office in Washington. I was just casting votes uh, on the floor of the Senate, and I am so excited to be doing uh, this event together uh, with Chris Evans. If you'll just wait for a moment, uh, we're going to get him on as well. Thanks. There we go. There we go. I've been sitting there watching you in silence for the past couple of minutes. Wait, I was waiting for you guys. How are you, sir? Just trying to land a plane, baby. I don't know. You know, <laughs> this Instagram stuff, it's wonderfully complicated. So um, uh, I, thank I, you for making a little time out of your day. Now, is that, is that your, it's, it, it wouldn't be a bat cave with you. Is that your man cave? What am I looking at behind you? Man cave, far from it. No, this is, this is my house in Massachusetts. This is, this is home sweet home. And where are you? North Shore? South Shore? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm actually kind of just west of Boston, little suburb. You probably haven't even heard of it. That's not true, actually. You might have. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to drop my address on this Instagram Live? Come on, Senator. You know better. <laughs> Come on, people who are tuning into Instagram. They want to know <laughs> the want inside the deal. They, they want, want the to know stuff. where does Captain America actually <laughs> live? What's the secret address? Give me your phone number. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for being on. Uh, what we're on to talk about today is this terrific new platform for civil discourse, for helping people connect with politics and with the issues of the day. It's called a starting point. Um, tell the folks who are watching, if you would, Chris, just a little bit about what made you start this. This isn't the sort of thing most folks with your success, your celebrity, uh, decide to fix politics. Politics, most people just think it's a mess. Why would I bother? Yeah. What was your idea? Why did you start it? And how's it going? Well, it's going well, thanks to you in large part. You know, you, you were our Senate sponsor. You're the reason we got in those lovely Senate recording studios. You, you were, come on, you know you were a big part of this. They're um, free. I, well, They're taxpayer funded. The studio's <laughs> here. They're empty all the time. It was nothing, nothing, I tell you. Well, you made us feel very at home. Uh, yeah, the reason was just, uh, you know, I, I consider myself a, a little bit of a news junkie, and I'm really into politics, and, and even I still have a really hard time finding basic, succinct information on, on a variety of issues. And I figured that that may be one of the reasons why some people uh, become disinterested in politics. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty daunting landscape. And, and I figured if there's a way that we can try to demystify some of these, uh, some of these policies, some of these bills, and, and hear from a variety of opinions who, who are in Washington to kind of make the environment a little more welcoming, it could encourage uh, participation. You, when we were first talking about a starting point, uh, you called it Schoolhouse Rock for Adults. That's right. Um, explain for the folks watching, what is this? What does a starting point do? What's on it? And sure. what do you mean Schoolhouse Rock for Adults? Sure. Well, well, Schoolhouse Rock for, for you know, now that you've dated me, uh, you know, Schoolhouse We've Rock provided the very digestible information, basic understanding of certain concepts that would be normally foreign to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said, I thought there was a little bit of a hole in the market for that. So the initial idea for a starting point was, was just section one, which is what we call section one now, where it is, uh, you know, basic questions, common questions the average American might have being answered by at least three Democrats and three Republicans. Because I do think it's important to hear, as I said earlier, even if I took the time to find succinct information online. The next step is, well, now I don't just want the information. I want to understand uh, the varying perspectives on this issue. What's the Democratic stance? What's the Republican stance? And even within those parties, there's a variety of opinion. So, so the goal was to not only uh, demystify the issue, but then offer a, a, a spectrum of opinions. Uh, and then the more we went back there, the more we spoke to people, the more we realized there was more information that you guys wanted to offer that didn't quite fit into the mechanism of Section 1. And we figured, why deny that information? So we created uh, Section 2, 
which is daily points where, where elected officials can uh, take 60 seconds and talk about any issue that means something to them. And then even further, we kind of figured that there was, you know, one of, one of the questions, as you know, when we interviewed you, uh, the, the way we would always begin our interviews is uh, what got you into politics, name a great memory, and, and what can be done to reduce bipartisanship. And a lot of people for that third question said, it's not as bad as the media would portray. They only do stories on the plane. You know, no, no one covers the stories about the planes that land. Uh, so, so we wanted to show the civil discourse w w when, it, when it functions properly. The fact that it happens all the time, every day. Uh, and, and, and it doesn't have to be this vitriolic. It doesn't have to be so polarizing. It doesn't have to be you versus me. Uh, discussion can be predicated on, okay, I hear what you're saying. Here's where I disagree. Listening and, and, and seeing the commonality before seeing where we, where we, where we differ. So, so section three is called counterpoints, where you have two elected officials who choose any issue they want to explore, and you do this structured back and forth, just to, again, not only examine the issue for the sake of the electorate, but, but return civility to the political discussion. So you challenged me uh, two or three weeks ago uh, to get a debate opponent for that part of it. I'm working hard on it. You I'm got really one? I was literally Nebraska, just harassing Ben Sass of Nebraska on the floor about it. Oh, I was teasing Todd Young of Indiana this morning. And one of the challenges here is making the time uh, yeah. to actually record that kind of a structured, concise uh, debate. I'd be interested in how you feel about the caliber. Um, how's it turning out? What's the quality like in terms of the back and forth in that third section, that decision point section? I mean, that third section to me is the one that I think has the most potential. And it's so funny when we, you know, we did so many trips back to D.C. And once we actually developed uh, the mechanism, once, once the, the site got up and running to the point that we could actually show elected officials the site itself, everyone's response was, you know, that's going to be the one that we're all curious to see if it works. Mm -hmm. Because it really puts elected officials to task. Um, now, in my humble opinion, I think every elected official should be able to stand by their opinions, debate them, defend them, listen rationally, show that they're a thorough thinker, and, and, and stand by their beliefs. Um, but again, it, it, it puts you on the record, and it leaves you a little exposed. Um, and, and this is why it's, it's this tricky... We, we have to kind of uh, gain momentum in a very gentle fashion. We have to provide comfort and trust to, to the elected officials, say, you guys can pick the issue, you can pick the person you want to debate. And it, again, it doesn't have to be this uh, argumentative landscape. It doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be you're right and I, I'm right and you're wrong. It can just be this is where we disagree. And, and, and you know, we can still find commonality even within that disagreement. Um, so I, I would say that I, I think it's going very well. Um, uh, Two of the things, Chris, that I really liked uh, within that structure. Um, I mean, I enjoy doing town halls in my home state of Delaware. Yeah. Um, I'll stand on my feet for two, three hours and take questions from over 100 people. Um, but that's a little hard um, to do day in and day out. Yeah. Um, you let us record whenever it works, whenever it's convenient for us. They're brief, they're concise, they're accessible. And we can also link to more information. So yeah. if I make an assertion in response to a question, uh, you're going to get a concise answer from me. But then I can also link to, well, here's where to follow up if you want more detailed information. So exactly. I think we built an amazing platform that more members, um, you know, governors and mayors, senators and congressmen, members of the House of Representatives ought to be uh, taking advantage of. How many folks have visited a starting point so far? Um, and what's involved for anybody who's watching? Like, what would it mean for them to become a part of this community or to sign up or to get better engaged? Sure. They literally typing in the words of startingpoint.com on your laptop and you're off and running. Uh, you know, we, we've had wonderful participation on your end. Uh, again, large in part thanks to you. You've been one of our biggest cheerleaders and really gotten a lot of people to jump in the pool. Um, but, but, you know, when, when it, in terms of uh, the public participation, I'm a little too scared to look at those numbers. Um, but, but from what I've heard, what I've been told is that we've had a very, uh, very satisfying, very, very successful first week. And, and again, it becomes this kind of um, perpetual motion. As long as we can keep, I, I do believe there's a strong symbiotic value here that every, you guys can, can stand to benefit, the electorate stands to benefit, everybody can win here. It's just a matter of making sure you guys continue to participate and that voters continue to come in and try to educate themselves. Well, my view, it's like a garden. You got to keep cultivating it. Uh, you got to keep weeding and seeding and making sure that it's fresh because, you know, someone who looks at it uh, once in July and then goes back and looks at it in August, yeah. if they don't see anything new, they don't see anything different. 
you know, they'll be less interested. If there's something going on, like what the heck's going on right now on the floor of the Senate, right, right across the way here? Are, are you guys going to extend unemployment? Are we going to be able to open schools safely? You're going to help? Uh, state well, and local governments, you're going to give liability yeah. relief. That's the big Republican yeah. talking point for the Democrats. It's, you know, OSHA and safe reopening standards. I can right. tell I probably ought to record something, shouldn't I? I was just going to uh, say, uh, Chris, you can go on your app right now and just kind of download all of this. And we'd be grateful. That That's the reason we expanded into Section 2 and 3, because had we only done Section 1 starting points, it would have been static information. You could have gone on a weekend processed every bit of, of, of information and had no need to come back. So, so again, that, that's why Daily Points has been uh, a very uh, robust section where people are continuing to contribute. So please feel free after this, just hit one little button on your phone, Chris. You will, you will get a daily section out of me today. <laughs> I, I have one last question I'm just dying to please. ask you. So having come here and, you know, spent time with members of the House and Senate and watching the blooper reel, uh, and, and being in the offices of folks who like admire you and adore you and support you and being in offices with folks who have no idea who you are. What do you think of Congress? What do you think of the average member of the House or Senate having had a chance to see us in our natural environment? Sure. I'll tell you this. None of you knew who I was. None of you. There, there, there was no part of me where I was like, oh, I'm going to coast on some fame waves here. Nope. You guys couldn't have cared less. Every person that came in was looking to their team of people saying, what is this? What are we Who's doing? Who's this what guy? Yeah, what's going on? What, 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 what am I answering? Literally every person that came in was doing a favor for somebody else. It's the only reason they came in. Um, but but I, I was also really humbled. As I said, the first thing we ask everybody in those interviews is, well, what inspired you to get into politics? And every single answer was, was predicated on a lifetime of service. Every, most people came from humble beginnings. Most people saw early on in their life that they wanted to help and, and give as much as they could. I, I mean, it really is a, it's a bit of a thankless job. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you, your life is this constant struggle. I find politics exhausting. And you guys got to do it every day. And again, every day. nobody gets the whole loaf, you know? So it's very hard to keep everybody happy. And you, you really have to be this North Star of, of understanding what's important to people is, is, is continuing to move the ball down the field. And, and that's full of little tiny concessions. And, and that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. And it's, it, 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 it conflicts with the idealism that I'm sure got you into politics to begin with. But in order to sustain the will and the passion and the bandwidth, you have to see the bigger picture. And, and, and that, that takes a lot of focus and, and altruism. And, and for that, I, I, was, I was really humbled and impressed. Well, Chris, it's a, it's a mix of the large and the small. Yeah. Uh, you can spend years uh, trying to get something done and then finally seeing it happen. Um, but you got to take joy in the, in the small wins and in the little ways yeah. you're able to help people. Uh, I'm working hard on a bill that would expand AmeriCorps national service. Um, and what's been encouraging to me is how it's gotten broad bipartisan support. Um, don't know if it's going to happen this year or not. Just got to keep grinding away at it. Uh, but you gave me a wonderful gift uh, through a starting point. Uh, Johnny Isaacson, a Republican senator Love of Georgia, was a dear friend of mine. He still is a dear friend of mine, but he's no longer actively serving in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, he's retired. He's home in Georgia. Um, and uh, when I was on the other day, I went and looked at what Johnny recorded months ago about why he was he one of our first service. interviews. And he told this whole story about Kate Pusey, uh, yeah. who was a Georgian, a young woman who was serving uh, in the Peace Corps in Benin in West Africa. Unsolicited, he didn't know the family, he didn't know her, he stopped by her funeral uh, and was so moved by it that he said to her parents, I'm gonna get justice for your daughter. Uh, and I'd only been a senator for a year uh, and he came to me on the floor and said, I need your help. And the two of us went to Benin together in West Africa. And Johnny worked and worked and worked at that. And he ended up passing a law that has made every Peace Corps volunteer in the world safer in their service overseas. And I was really struck that in the decades of his service, like that was the thing he chose. But it was yeah. about helping one particular family in the memory of one particular young American who'd been engaged in service. Um, and in some ways that both gave me a wonderful insight into a dear colleague and friend um, and was a reminder you know, you play Captain America, but in your work on a starting point, you've also lived up to the spirit of the character you play in terms of inspiring so many of us to share with the rest of our country what it is that makes us want to make a difference. So thank you. You've been a great partner and a friend in this, and I owe you a new daily point today. 
Hey, pal, we couldn't do it without you. But I'll hold you to that daily point. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for being on. Take care, buddy.